Hey guys, I know it's travel season. Summer is just starting here in Canada. This is June 27th. And so kids are gonna be out of school soon and a lot of families are gonna be traveling. We just returned from um, Grand Memories, Veradero, Cuba um, this morning at 4 a.m. We got home. Um, so I wanted to pop on and do a quick review for you guys on our experience there while it's still fresh in my memory. And then I have video and um, sort of extra items that I can share with you um, that I took while I was on the resort. I just need to edit it and put that video together. But if you're planning to book a trip to Grand Memories, Veradero specifically, um, this review should help you decide if that's a good place for you to stay. Um, we travel generally a few times a year. I used to work for an airline. Um, and so we used to travel a ton. And this is the first time that we've gone somewhere in a little while, um, but I try and give a fair assessment as to um, what things are like and compare it to other experiences as well. So um, let's get started. The categories that I'm gonna be discussing today are our tour operator um, and how we found that experience through booking and our flights and all of that. And then I'll move on to the amenities at the resort, the food, the location and the layout of the resort, as well as the beach property. And um, then I'll talk about the room, the Diamond Club upgrade, um, Wi-Fi, because I knew before we went, we had it was hard for me to find information about Wi-Fi. So I'll touch on that. The drinks, um, the pools, the entertainment service and then overall my impression and what I go again so let's get all of those categories covered and I'll go through this as quickly as possible so first our tour operator tour operator was Sunwing Airlines they're no longer going to be operating under their flagship name they're going to be absorbed into the business with WestJet I flew Sunwing 17 or so years ago and it was a poor experience, but we gave them another try finally. Um, the flight was three hours delayed leaving and so that really messed us up on the other side. When we got there, instead of getting there at 8 o'clock, we ended up at our resort at 1 o'clock in the morning. And with two small children age 6 and 8, that was really um, difficult to, to, to navigate. Um, so that isn't the hotel's fault. That's our tour operator. Our flight on the way back was fine. Um, it was, it wasn't delayed. It was on time and the aircrafts are new. They also have, um, in seat plugs. So if you have a device that you're watching a movie or something on, you can still keep that charged even though you're in the air, which is nice. The modern seats with those plugs are nice. They don't offer any onboard entertainment so you won't find a TV. And I know like WestJet um, has or had an app that you could, um, if you downloaded it, you could get access to movies and TV shows while you're on board. With Sunwing, there's nothing like that. So you really do have to bring your own entertainment um, and make sure if you're even listening to an audiobook, you have the downloaded copy on your device. So that was it for the tour operator they don't offer anything but coffee tea and water on board uh, everything else is for a charge so we bought three little cans of pringles chips and it was twelve dollars so when you're traveling with kids especially you want to just pack all your snacks and things um, we pack snacks going down and um, so we never had to purchase anything in the airport or um, on the plane going down. But on the way back, it was nice to just have some chips and sit back and relax. So um, in future, I'll pack Pringles chips because they have the cans and they don't get crushed. And so I'd be able to take them um, with us from home and have them on the way back without having a bunch of like crushed up chips. Anyways, that's an aside. So there were huge tour groups and there was a language barrier between the travelers. The guests did not speak English well and certainly didn't speak Spanish well. And um, the check-in agent, the one check-in agent that they allocated for that night shift, knowing that there would be a busload of people coming, 70 or more people, they 
that person also didn't speak very good English. So the check-in process took so long. And also with other hotels, what they do is they prepare the check-in packages ahead of time. So you come, you identify who you are, perhaps they check your ID, and then they have your key card, they have your room assignments, they have your um, little like write-up about the hotel and the opening times of the restaurants and all of that stuff in a package and they hand it to you and off you go um, with the bellman to go to your room. This hotel decided that a busload of 70 people arriving at one o'clock in the morning that the one check-in agent that they assigned to the desk had to assign every single room at that time. So with the language barrier, the people were requesting certain things like I want a double bed, I want a king bed, all these things. And now she has to go and search through the system, find a room for that person. And even though they had booked as a large group, now she's attempting to try and put them in the same area of the hotel, like the same blocks. This should have been done already. That's how it should be done. And it wasn't. So check-in took like upwards of 90 minutes and we had two sleeping kids. I had one in the lobby sleeping on a couch and the other one that desperately needed to go to sleep running around um, and we were just in the heat just trying to keep it all together. At one point, the mosquitoes just got so overwhelming. I ended up opening up my suitcase in the middle of the lobby to search for the uh, bug spray to douse them in it because we weren't gonna survive the night. It was so bad. Anyway, so we got our room assignment and um, I had emailed the hotel prior to arriving. I emailed them seven days ahead because um, we were traveling for my son's sixth birthday, my husband's 39th birthday, Father's Day, and our 10 year wedding anniversary. So I really, and I knew we'd be coming in late. And I, so I really wanted things to go smoothly. I emailed the manager and I asked that we have a room on the second floor um, and a few other things just so that they would have an easy time placing us where it would work for us. And then we would have an easy week just being able to enjoy and relax. I never heard back from the manager. And when we got to the check-in counter, she said that person doesn't work there anymore, even though their email address is listed on their company website as the person to contact. Um, so she picked a room for us and it was 2.30 in the morning. We were exhausted from traveling from one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and we couldn't find a bellman. We couldn't find uh, one of those carts to take us where we need to go. And she was now being yelled at by somebody that had come back from a room that they were unhappy with. So we just took our key cards and I said, we'll deal with whatever, whatever we get tonight, we get and we'll deal with whatever in the morning. So my husband carried our son that's sleeping in two of our bags and I carried the other two and had, um, my eldest walking with us. And we wandered around the resort until we found, um, we found the building that we were supposed to be in and we got into our room. Well, I'm a person that I don't like bugs and all that stuff. Upon entering the room, we just changed the kids out of their sweaty clothes and got them into bed and found a cockroach this big, like, I was, I, I, I didn't think I was going to sleep. Anyways, so with that, there were lizards, there were um, tons of ants in our room. Like, like the, I can't, I have photos. I will share the photos with you later. Anyways, so that was that. Um, we slept the night and first thing in the morning, oh, we got, we, we got diamond, we got the diamond club upgrade. Um, so I'll just mention that because that sort of takes us through the rest of our trip and how it went. So in the morning, we went back to the front desk and they guided us over to um, guest services. Um, the staff at the hotel, I have mixed feelings about them. I, and I, it's difficult. Anyways, so we met uh, the guest service rep there 
guests had left his office. We waited a few minutes. They didn't look up to acknowledge that we were waiting outside the office. So we went in, the four of us. Um, I sat down, my son sat down, my husband was there, and they two agents sitting at the desk across the table from us didn't say, good morning, how can I help you? There was no acknowledgement that we were there. They were on their cell phones, texting. So my husband said, let us know when you're ready, right? To, to let them know like we were waiting on them. And they said, okay. What? Okay. So we waited a couple more minutes. I'd say like three or four minutes went by. I mean, I kept looking at my husband. He kept looking at me like we were having a good chuckle because for five years, I worked for an airline and I understand customer service. And my husband for 20 years worked in the hotel industry and this would never fly anywhere. You acknowledge someone when they come to see you and you say, I'm sorry, I just need to wrap up this email. Can you just give me a second and I'll be right with you? Nothing. Anyways, so when he was done, he looks up from his phone and he's like, yes. So he said, I stated what our issues were with all the bugs and the everything in the room. And um, that we were looking to get another room and we'd like it to be on the second floor um, and that it was an important trip for us and we really wish that we could get this sorted out as quickly as possible so that we can go on to enjoying the rest of our trip. I let him know that it was our 10 year wedding anniversary and the birthdays and everything. Not once did he say, I'm sorry for what you experienced in your room, nothing. And it wasn't just the bugs and all of that, like the room was really crumbling, like, and there was like mold in the room, like there was water dripping in different places, like it just wasn't, there were hairs in places, like it did not feel like you went on vacation, it wasn't well taken care of, and like the walls were peeling, the the frames of the um, the door, the bathroom door was peeling, the cupboard doors, like it looked really, really beat up, like it had been completely unattended in a long time. Okay, so he said, okay, um, and he just started typing on the computer. He didn't say, let me see what I can do. I'm gonna try and move you. And they sat there for about like four or five minutes speaking in Spanish and not acknowledging our concerns or sort of letting us know what the process was to happen so it was very awkward and uncomfortable and it didn't need to be like all that was required was just to say okay well I'm working on a solution for you can you just give me a couple of minutes so that just left a sort of a negative taste in our mouth from the beginning in the end he told us to come back at 4 30 that they were gonna have a new room for us and so he said thank you that's great and um, I asked for it to be on the second floor and he said he would take us to the room and show it to us. Um, so about 5.30, we spent the day, we had a great day in the pool. There was an activity pool with a swim up bar and it was, they had like a, a, like a beach entry on one side and um, a little bit of a deeper spot in other areas. It was a really nice pool, really nice like beach area, not beach area, sorry, really nice activity pool with a swim up bar and everything. The kids really enjoyed jumping off different elements in the pool and it just was a very like open and fun environment. They have like an animation area, um, like little booth that you'd think they would be having like regular activities and games and like engagement from but they just literally set up like a speaker and played music all day. And it was fine. We had great time. We played, um, they had a little ping pong table under a shade. We enjoyed that. And all in all, like the first day outside of the room situation was great. Um, we, uh, we went again. The guy's name was Jonathan. He took us to the new room. We saw the new room. It was fine. The beds were rock hard. So the beds in the first room were no problem. They were comfortable. The beds in the second room were rock hard. So after that first night in our second room, the room was much cleaner. It was a newly renovated uh, building. And um, we were happy there. It was 
very adequate. I mean, we've been to five star, we've been to four and a half, we've been to four star. This was a four. The other one would have been a two, like it was bad, um, but it wasn't a five star. It's fine, it's a room. It was comfortable. Um, the only problem was the bed. So the, the next morning we woke up and the beds were absolutely rock hard. Um, and my back was really in shambles. They did try and fix it by adding some extra blankets and whatnot. But the tip is my husband actually flipped the mattress over and found that it was far more comfortable on the flip side. So if you're ever in a resort and the beds are really, really uncomfortable and they're not helping you to resolve the issue, try flipping the mattress over. I think they actually had it on the wrong side because I never had another night of problems once we flipped it. Okay, so let's move on to the amenities of the hotel. Um, they have lots of bars. You're not short of bars anywhere. They do have a coffee bar. Uh, they do have a snack bar. The snack bar is really well stacked. So um, at any time of day or night, even like four o'clock in the morning, you can get hamburgers, pasta, burritos, pizza, uh, fries, all that kind of stuff. It's always available. Um, so even when we arrived at um, and got settled at four in the morning, we were able to have something to eat then. Um, so that was really nice because sometimes they say they have a snack bar and they just like lay out a few things, but this is like cooked to order. It was really, that was a really nice um, aspect. In terms of amenities, um, this is a very relaxed place to go. So I've been to Bahia Principe and they have like an activity schedule from morning till night. They've got like basket weaving and like crafts for the kids and volleyball tournaments and like pool parties and dance competitions and like all sorts of activities from morning till night. This place, it's not like that. You have to bring your own, you bring your own entertainment. Um, like for maybe one hour a day, they'll throw on some music, they'll have a bunch of the staff come and dance and they'll have like a hula hoop competition and that is the extent of the activities. We have a six and an eight year old, we would have taken them to do anything that the resort offered and really we didn't find that they offered anything to do. So we just had to make our own fun. I brought beach toys, I brought pool floaties, I brought games, like they had their tablets, we had coloring books, whatever, like so we were fine, but don't expect to get there and like have things to do, um, which was fine. I had my audiobooks and like we really went on vacation to just relax and like unwind. So it actually worked out fine for us, um, but there's not a lot to do. They do have a spa and they do have a gym, which we never went to either because even the baby club, which is the kids club, which offers supervised play, was never open so we were never able to like leave our children to go and get a massage or go to the gym or do anything else that like more adult they also say that they offer water sports but there was never anything like specific as to what they offer how many times a day you can use it or how many hours a week or how to rent it or anything like that um so yeah I mean, some people are looking for a very energetic and like exciting um, hotel and resort. This was not it. This is a really relaxed, chill by the pool, listen to some music, eat food, be with your people kind of thing. Um, so we'll move on to the food then. So the food in Cuba is generally not what you go for. Um, we've been to Cuba six, seven, eight times maybe maybe more um and i'm never looking forward to the food uh but this resort i was pleasantly surprised the first two days the food was what we expected we not blown away but you could find something to eat but every day the food got a little bit better and like my children were eating huge plates of just like not fries but other stuff so like they had rice and beans that were really well seasoned um, they had pork on the grill, like they would grill it right in front of you. They'd grill chicken right in front of you. Those things were amazing. We always enjoy the omelets, which was always great. 
they had mango which was amazing like they had other fruits too um like papaya and watermelon but they didn't look as good but the mango was really nice um what else did we like they had like a they had a curry chicken um yeah like the buffet was was fine like i can genuinely say that the food was a good part of our vacation um it was never an issue uh so if you're worried about food this resort actually is pretty good <laughs> um in terms of cuban resorts um yeah we went to the a la carte we did so we we got the diamond club upgrade which was really nice so in the main buffet they have a special seating area for the diamond club it felt more spacious um i don't know what other benefit it is to sit there but um that was nice diamond club also gives you your own private concierge and they had a special diamond club dinner actually on our anniversary night um so we got to go to a special restaurant and get taken care of there my husband didn't really enjoy the food but it, it was fine to me like i didn't need to go to the buffet and eat after um it was fine and my kids ate and it was satisfactory like i mean again we're not blown away um and then you're also supposed to get two a la carte meals for your stay uh diamond club gets three but we were only actually able to book for one more night for a la carte because it's just super difficult we never met our concierge until like day four i don't know the concierge's desk was always vacant and whenever we'd ask they're like she's coming in at three but like who's hanging out in the lobby at three you're usually in the lobby after breakfast or before breakfast or like you at three you're doing something you're either off the resort doing something or at the beach or in the pool like you're not trying to hang out in the lobby at three o'clock in the afternoon so they really need to work on making things more accessible so um our italian night dinner was interesting <laughs> people would come and like eat the food and then like leave their plate of food on the table and just walk out um, the food wasn't the best, but again, it wasn't the worst. Um, they had some appetizers that were actually quite nice. And the main course was, it left something to be desired, but I mean, you're in Cuba, you're not in Italy, so you cannot, you know, expect the unexpected amazingness. Anyways, the food was fine. Okay, the location. So the location is about 40 minutes from the airport, the Veradero Airport, VRA. Um, and the way that the resort is situated is like, if this is the beach, the resort is like on an angle like this. So our room was up here, then the main lobby is here, then the main pool is here, and then you walk down this little strip to the beach at the bottom. So the beach is actually only like, I know this is so awkward, like this much space on the whole resort. So it's not a beachfront resort where you can kind of get to the beach anywhere you are. You have to like walk through the whole resort and get right down to the bottom to get to the, to the um, beach. And then when you're on the beach, your strip of the beach is small because they're, all the other hotels have the same thing. So that was a bit weird. Um, we're used to like being beachfront where like the beach is like, you have like access to like two kilometers of beach or three or four. Like here it was like one kilometer. And so all the beach chairs were stacked up behind one another. Let me see. Okay, so beach, resort, and then okay. So this is the beach. 
this is how the resort is. And then this is how all the ch beach chairs are stacked. Like the palapas are stacked on the beach. So you're in like rows behind other people. So when you're in your chair, you don't actually see the like shoreline or the ocean. You see like blank ocean, like the dark ocean because you can't see the blue because you are so far away from the actual ocean. I like to be like, like, I like to be on the ocean and like be sitting on my chair and be able to see my kids playing in the sand right here and then the ocean be like just, they're coming and going from the shoreline, which is not the case there. So we actually only spent one day at the beach and because we were Diamond Club, we also had a private area on the beach, um, which was less full, which was nicer. And we had a private bar on the beach um, with premium alcohol. Um, so we did use that a little bit, but we only stayed on the beach for like a half a day and we never went back. Um, actually on the way to the beach, the, the, the property, I don't know if they're not maintaining the sidewalks or like whatever, but there was a huge drop off um, on the pathway. Like there should be stones there and it was missing. And I fell and I scraped my knee on the second day so bad that um, the entire week I couldn't go in the pool or anything because it was like a raw open like, problem. <laughs> so um, going in the ocean was out of the question too because it would burn. Like it was such a big gash that um, that I, I had to keep it even protected from the sun because my skin was so raw that it was burning in the sunlight. <sighs> Anyways, okay, so that's, the beach is beautiful, the, the sand is beautiful, it's this beautiful powdery, soft, wonderful sand. The ocean is clean and clear and so nice. Um, but that was a weird, like, layout. And it's located between the Ibero Star and another hotel on the other side. So you can see all the other hotels, like as you're walking around the property, you're like, is that our hotel? No, it's somebody else's hotel. Um, and the other hotels are facing like, it's just a weird layout. Anyways, so the rooms I already went over, they were adequate. If you're going, try and, um, try and get one of the renovated rooms. The Diamond Club, would I say that it's worth upgrading? Yes, um, we got a bottle of rum in our room. We were supposed to get beer every day. Our mini fridge stocked with beer every day. We only got two beers in the entire trip. Um, so if you're looking for like that premium service, forget about it. I already talked about the concierge. She, she was almost never available. Um, she was super sweet and super nice, but she was almost, I think we met her twice. So, um, but the Diamond Club, you get the premium alcohol when you go to the bar and you get invited to that extra dinner. And, oh, we got a late checkout um, because we were Diamond Club. Um, our flight didn't leave. We weren't supposed to leave our hotel until 5 p.m. Um, and so the having a late checkout was really helpful. They give you standard for uh, standard checkout is 12 noon and Diamond Club you get a 2 p.m. checkout free of charge. Um, seeing all those people leaving their hotel rooms at 12 noon with their suitcases and having to sit in the heat and the humidity of the hotel lobby for like five hours. Um, having that later checkout was really, really nice. Um, to be able to just like, you know you're having a long travel day, so to be able to go back to your room where there's air conditioning and you can take a shower and all of that was really nice. Um, also because we were Diamond Club, um, we got invited to a special tasting. So, um, because we were sitting in our Diamond Club area and you get a special wristband for Diamond Club and with that, they identified us as people that they want. They asked, they invited to a special tasting. They're trying out a new menu across all of their hotel trains um, in all of Cuba, Dominican Republic, wherever they have their hotel chains. 
they wanted to add some new dishes to it. So they were photographing the food, this amazing, beautiful, like I have photos of it, I'll add to another review. This beautiful food, they were photographing it and then bringing it over to our table and giving it to us to eat. And we got to sit with the chefs and like the executive chefs and the, the, the director of like guest experience and like everybody and they just treated us so well they just like that was really special it was the best food I have ever had at any resort at any all-inclusive it was so good and we had lobster we had shrimp we had conch we had um we had lamb we had beef we had chicken like we had so many dishes and then at the end they brought this beautiful rice pudding dessert and i was like dying like it was so good and i could only have two spoonfuls because i was so full from tasting so what they did was they would take a photo of a plate and then they would give us the plate and there were four of us sharing it so some things my children were like in love with and they ate the whole thing <laughs> other things um, I got a couple of bites from, but at the end of it, we had eaten so many different things and it all tasted amazing. So just for that alone, like this, this whole trip was like just amazing. It was, it was very, very memorable. That meal was one of the best. Um, and that's because we got that diamond club bracelet, um, to begin with why we were actually invited to that special tasting. They only had one other family a, a mom and her daughter the daughter might have been 30 um come to that tasting meal so we re we really felt really really special um, so wi-fi um they had free wi-fi so they provided free wi-fi and actually in our room they had a d-link a uh, router so that we got really good internet in our room you had to go to the front desk and get like a little piece of paper with this like made up email address and a made up password to get access to the internet. Um, and it was only good for one device for 72 hours. And sometimes it didn't work, <laughs> but, um, and I only was able to get connected twice to check emails to make sure our flight was on time and to check on our dog sitter. But my husband was able to like watch YouTube videos and download podcasts and he had fast, internet it was no problem for him um so he was able to keep up with whatever he wanted to do on the internet and um yeah like fast enough to be watching movies and all that stuff so the internet was really great and it was free um and you had it access not just in the lobby but in your room at the beach bar wherever you were like you could get internet access so that was a nice um addition drinks um you're at an all-inclusive you got all the drinks they didn't have a lot of mixes so you couldn't like order like a sex on the beach or like a painkiller or any of those mixed drinks that generally they have access to here like it at resorts they generally didn't have many juice options either like fanta was like always on tap beer was usually available um you could always get rum you could sometimes get whiskey um you could always get a pina colada uh but sometimes they had pepsi sometimes they don't um depending on which location and what time of day it is um and like i said they didn't have any like juices to do any mixes um of any of those other fun like vacation cocktails you couldn't really get that um but <laughs> you know whatever it's fine they had wine they had red wine white wine um yeah that's all i can remember you can get wine at lunch and dinner in the dining room and those things at the bar at any time um but they really didn't have a, an extensive like alcohol collection um the pools so they had an activity pool and it was great the first couple of days and then people started arriving in droves so when we complained about the hour and a half check-in at the beginning um and how they didn't prepare for 70 guests and that it was 
crazy that they had one agent working for 70 people checking in. Um, they said, oh, it's our low season. Like, that's the response. Like, it wasn't like, thank you for your feedback, right? It was just like, well, that's your problem. Like, you came in low season. This is the 26th-ish week. 26. We got there. Anyways, it's the, one of the last weeks in June. Um, and they said it was a low season. But as the week went on, the place was so busy. We arrived on a Monday, so our first full day was a Tuesday. By... Thursday people started to just like flood the place like we would go to the activity pool you could not find a chair it was like standing room only in the pool it was crazy and then by Friday like I asked the towel guy do people in Cuba vacation here because we've had that experience recently in Dominican Republic where Friday Saturday Sunday the place is packed like I commented in another video that it was like a feeding frenzy. There was never enough food. There was never enough towels. There was never enough anything because on the weekends, the place was filled up with families, like Dominican families. So I was shocked to find the same experience now happening in Cuba. Friday, you you saw people like change over there. It wasn't like tourists. Like everywhere you went, you would hear Spanish speaking. You. There were just people everywhere. The pools were so full. So we were really thankful that there was a second pool by our hotel room, by our new room, which we wouldn't have known about if we didn't get that new hotel room. Um, and it was a quiet pool because it was off the beaten path. Nobody knew about it. So we had a place to relax and just have some downtime and it'd be quiet and we could just swim, and not be bumping into people playing football in the pool or volleyball or throwing bottle not bottles throwing cups and like all this stuff the activity pool was very active and very rowdy so that quiet pool was like our sanctuary we would go there every day and the kids could just splash around we could float on our floaties and like that was great and there was another bar there but was only open sometimes like it was only open one of the days that we went there um so if you need a quiet pool, there is a quiet pool. If you need an act active pool where you can make friends and like have a great time, there is an activity pool. And then of course you have the beach. Okay, let's move on to entertainment. So entertainment, it was non-existent, just like I said about the kids club. Uh, you have to bring your own entertainment. Um, usually like resorts, they'll have like a chess set or like things that you can rent uh, to have fun like a tennis court or anything like that this place they had a tennis court I don't know where or how you would get access to it or the equipment needed they didn't have any like games going on by the entertainment staff um, and um, they have a huge they have a huge uh, uh, entertainment venue right uh, that they would do shows and they only did show one of our seven eight nights one of our eight nights they did a show and um, one of the nights they did a mini disco and because the resort is so like not organized and there's no like rhyme or reason to anything and there's no like collectiveness <laughs> Uh, like the staff are out there actively engaging people nobody knew about it and only like five kids showed up so that was really disappointing like I've been to other resorts where like the kids club is happening during the day like the kids are getting to know each other because they're doing like a craft together and the staff are coming over to the chairs and inviting kids to come and do activities and then they like actively advertise like on the loudspeaker and um talking to families and putting up like signage and stuff that there's a mini disco happening and then everybody comes in the place is filled with kids just having a good time well here there was none of that and only five kids showed up because i had gone into the kids club to ask them what was happening for entertainment and she told me that's the only reason i know because i was actively seeking them out and i finally noticed that the door was open and when i went in she said there was nothing happening then but um that they were gonna have a mini disco um so that was disappointing it wasn't fun um 
yeah, this place lacks entertainment. Like the entertainment staff should be dressed in the same clothing. They should be running volleyball games at the beach. They should be running crafts for the kids. Like they should be entertaining the guests. The only, I had a run in with the entertainment staff because we came to the activity pool and we took four beach chairs, like four of the lounge chairs for the four of us, my husband, myself, and my two kids, four beach chairs. And we were putting our things down and the entertainment staff came over and said, can I take one of these chairs? <laughs> what? She took one of the four chairs that we had away and put it somewhere else for her and her posse. And then she proceeded to get into the pool and hang out with guests. What? It's not, what? You took away the item we needed for yourself and then you're in the pool hanging out in your work uniform as a guest. I, I've been traveling to all inclusives for more than 25 years. I've never seen anything like that. That was a new one for me. Okay, so let's move on to service then. So when we first got there, I was like, oh, the service here is great. Like people weren't demanding tips. Like you can tell a culture of a resort pretty quickly. Um, and it didn't have this like tip, 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 tip atmosphere, which I really appreciated because that drives me crazy. Like I want to tip and I want to appreciate people for good service um, or where like I see it. I just, like, you have a feeling and you just want to give. Like I came there with money prepared to give. Um, I don't want to feel like pressured or obligated or like treated poorly to get that tip. I just want it to flow naturally. Like I just want to give. And um, so I found that like we had to demand service. So I'd have to be going over to the workstation in the dining room. Can we please have water? Can we have a fork? Can we have napkins? So after that first day, I kind of like got really upset with one of the girls and I was like, we have been sitting here. You're walking all around us and refuse to give us water. I've asked and asked, please, can you bring us water? Um, and after that, she became like more attentive and we actually built a pretty good friendship. Like. We would talk about her kids and my kids and like it was it actually turned out better um but i don't want to have to be that person that like gets at you you know um and then it was a really really weird culture i didn't feel pressured to tip at the beginning but once i started tipping people started to notice and get like upset if i didn't tip if that makes any sense. Um, like they'd be like, well, you tipped her. Like now you have to tip me and like you're a tipper. So like, where's my tip? You know, I actually had people ask for tip. Where's my tip? Like, so that really rubs me the wrong way. Or like, they're not happy. They don't have a smile for you. Like if you haven't tipped them lately, like, I don't know. It was, it was really weird. I guess that's anywhere. You travel but we had a few servers that like I really really liked like a lot and I um, and our yeah and our room attendant too I had brought some like clothes and like I had things that I had bought for my boys that they outgrew with tags on it and everything so I brought it down and I was like prepared to give it to anyone and like the room attendant was like asking for stuff she's like can you leave your kids clothes can you leave this and like that's never been my experience in Cuba ever um, so I was like, well, I can't leave my kids clothes. They need that for the summer, but I've got this other stuff. I'm like, I brought, maybe you can like sell it to someone or trade it for what you need. Right. But then she would just start like finding stuff. Like she's like looking like, can I have your water bottle? Can I have this? Can I have that? And I was like, this is not a store. <laughs> like, these are the things that we need, you know, like I, I don't know. So 
Like the more I gave, I felt like the more pressure there was to give more. Like even I was just like on the beach and somebody would come up and like start talking to me and be like, do you have gifts for me? And I'm like, no, like, no. So I don't know, take it how you want to. It was a bit weird. Um, so overall, would I go back to this place again? So um, we go to different places every single time. I've never repeated a place that I've ever gone to before. Um, that's especially since I worked in the airline industry. I wanted to test them all out. I do have my favorites. Um, this is not my favorite. Um, although this is the best food I've ever had at an all-inclusive with the tasting menu. Um, would I go here again? My husband said yes, he would go here again. My boys did not like it. And for me, if I needed just a break, just to relax, maybe. <laughs> if I wanted a lively vacation with things to do and experiences to have, no, definitely not. Um, there was no disco. I like, I want to dance. I want to have fun. There was none of that. Um, if I got it for like a good deal, like, I think I would go back. It was, it was just like the faults of it don't outweigh the benefits of like the things that we got. Like we got a, a week away, relaxed. We had a, the opportunity to relax in a pool. I mean, the lobby was was um, was big and lovely. Oh, the other entertainment. Guests would get up and use the piano. And so in the evening time, it was like guests were like performing and giving entertainment. And when they checked out, there was no more entertainment in the lobby. So that was really sad because those guests, like they played that piano, like that piano needed to be played. It was beautiful. It was so nice to sit there in the lobby in this big open space and just listen to this beautiful piano playing and like your kids running around and just like a good vibe. It was so nice, um, but it was a guest doing the entertainment. So that was weird. Um, yeah. So if you, if you can get a good deal on this, like if you can pay the amount of money you want to pay um, for a five, a seven night all inclusive and you go here, do it ask them for the um ask them for the renovated section and definitely definitely upgrade to the diamond club i think it's it's necessary it, it, it improves your experience a lot um and go for it just temper your expectations like they're you'll always find people on their phones like the staff are at the front desk in your room in the pool area like in the guest services in the dining room the staff are always on their cell phones i've never seen that either before but it was a good enough time so that's my overall review if you are interested in seeing pictures and like videos from the resort to see all the things that it has to offer and like the look of the resort then hit the subscribe button and that notification bell because as soon as I can put all those snippets of video that I got together and just make it look nice um, I will put that out for you guys um, but yeah that's my review of the resort and the hotel and our week away uh, thanks for watching